Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplays and yes it's some more Project Reality 1.39 now in regards where we are I've got no idea I absolutely got no idea all I know is we're playing as the Brits and we're fighting the insurgents that's all I needed to know when I saw this come up in the map rotation I thought yeah do you know what I'll have a little bit of that and if anybody knows me or you've seen my channel or any of my other videos You'll know that when I was in 16AA, I used to love the big guns. Para, are you compensating? It's ridiculous when people say that. You can still use the jimpy, even if you've got a big knob. <coughs> I digress. So yes, we've got some more Project Reality. I do love the sound effects and everything else in this game. And with there being so many maps, it seems to be you don't really get chance to get to learn the maps in and out and that's a good thing for me I actually like that I don't want to be playing the same maps over and over and over again now the downside to using the jimpy is obviously sight lines at ranges that we're fighting at here four to six hundred meters it is very very difficult to see what you're actually actually firing at with the iron sights it's more of a where are the enemy suppress them and I'm told that this thing when you're on the receiving end is an absolute beast it will absolutely rip you to pieces so you don't want to be anywhere near this when this thing is going off so in this footage as the Brits suicide bomber there just took us out as the Brits when we come back in we actually get into this compound which is on my right and I think there are two different types of players not only in Miltons and Project Reality and everything else, you're either an, an attacker or a defender. And I personally am a defender. I love to defend. It's those quiet times between the carnage and the action that I really like. So me getting in this compound and getting on the Hescos and possibly having to wait there for the enemy to come to me is all part of the game there. A little bit of a kangaroo trying to get on the Hesco there. It's all part of the game for me and I find that enjoyable. I just wish more people would enjoy defense because especially when it comes to games like squad everybody goes off on attack and there's nobody on defend you get back capped blah 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 and you end up losing the actual game so i'm going to get in this compound here i'm actually going to take out a suicide car that tries to come in to, towards the hescos and take him out and you'll also see me get shot a couple of times because you purely cannot see that far with the actual iron sights and there are snipers obviously and marksmen's further out for the insurgents over towards the south i think it is where i'm facing now so again i honestly it's been very rare that i've actually had a bad game in project reality and for those of you who are saying well it's not really accessible for new players i got there eventually it did take a while and i did find somebody to help me and th there are some good people out there and there are some utter utter you know what's in this community as well but there is with every community but anyway i'll stop waffling on and i shall do a video about accessibility for new players and um i learn something every single game in here anyway i've been para players and this is me with the jimpy god knows where Operation Panther's Claw has just begun. Objective, secure a small part of Helmand province, the Taliban heartland, before the Afghan elections. It's late June, and the Black Watch Regiment have two and a half months before polling day. With them at all times, translators, megaphones in hand. But on this occasion, there's no talking to be done. They are under heavy fire, chasing insurgents in Babaji district. Photojournalist Sean Smith records the fighting, the fighters, and the few civilians caught in the middle. This is his frontline account of Panther's Claw. Black Watch are establishing a forward operating base in a maze of irrigation canals and empty homesteads. The Ministry of Defence will, in time, claim Panther's Claw a success, unofficially estimating 230 enemy deaths.
Yet after weeks embedded with the Black Watch, Sean Smith will see no conclusive evidence of Taliban dead. They are an elusive foe. Minutes ago, the Black Watch were under attack from inside this family compound. But things can change quickly. After fighting their way in, all is quiet. The Taliban have left and in a hurry. Yeah, he's Tea through right. there, the side of the kettle is all still hot, and there's a, a mortar around obviously then, so obviously they sat, had a bit of brew, had something to eat, and then obviously moved on when we pushed down to this location. Few civilians remain, for this is a war zone. Some, though, have seen it all before. This old man has farmed here all his life and refuses to leave. All the governments who've been in power here till this moment, they couldn't bring peace. Now the Americans want to bring peace. It's even worse now. Late afternoon and the Black Watch come under fire again. They throw smoke grenades for cover, running through the shadows back to the base they share with the Afghan National Army. Stand by. Bang. Back in Babaji with the Black Watch, Panther's Claw is now weeks old. The area is still far from safe. <laughs> You're like an angel of death, you are. Metal detectors pick up improvised explosive devices, the IEDs, that have killed more British soldiers this year than bullets. To tell the lads to get into cover, just pull back off the bond line, just get into cover while there's a small um, controlled explosion. Oh shit, look at that bit. <laughs> I see that coming as I. A specialist disposal officer dismantles a pressure plate, the trigger for a roadside bomb. They realise it's only recently been laid. Obviously if you find something, it's back to square one. Captain Judith Gallagher performs a painstaking and dangerous task. Stand by! Firing! A day in the life of a British soldier, eh? Fucking put. The Black Watch fight their way to another compound, and again their foe has already fled. They find no evidence of fatalities, no blood trails, no enemy bodies, but freshly spent bullet casings litter the stairwell. And after every contact, they search for casualties, but it may take days for it to be safe enough to return, and the Taliban invariably remove their dead. They don't want to leave behind any clues. A few days ago, the Black Watch had been pinned down in Enemy this hamlet the by snipers. They'd called in an airstrike, and the shooting promptly stopped. They're back to investigate a rare sight, a body lying in a field. But what they discover are the remains of a teenage girl. She's unlikely to have been a fighter. The Ministry of Defence estimate there have been just three civilian deaths in the run-up to the Afghan elections. They are unable to confirm whether this young woman was one of them. It is the only body that Sean Smith sees in two and a half months of filming in Afghanistan. He saw no dead insurgents. Operation Panther's Claw cost the lives of ten British soldiers. Its success will be measured on Thursday when the country goes to the polls.